Hello, hello, Shagat Thunun here. Welcome to another Rust coding stream here on the 19th of December, 2022, local time 17. And here we have some map generation. You know, every time I've ran this, it's given me one of these drunkards walk. Last time uh, we did um, Diffusion Limited um, Aggregation, DLA, and we also did some refactoring of the uh, drunkard's walk algorithm. Basically, we took some commonalities between the two and extracted them out to make it a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer to work with. Um, if I run this a couple times, we should be able to get something different. Oh, this, this is something new, symmetry. That was a, a symmetry one that we added. Um, well, we can keep running it and we'll get different things. It's getting harder to test without uh, cellular automata. It's getting harder to test without um, explicitly deleting a bunch of, or, or not deleting, but like removing the randomness. Yeah, that's that's an old one. That was a fun one though. All right, that's good enough. Let's see some of the examples here. All right, so today we're going to be doing what looks like it's going to be pretty short. I thought this was um, wave function collapse. That's going to be next time. So today is going to be Voronoi Hive slash Cell Maps. If we take a look over here, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we've touched on Voronoi diagrams before in our spawn placement. In this section, we'll use them to make a map. The algorithm is basically subdivides the map into regions and places walls between them. The result is a bit like a hive. You can play with the distance slash adjacency algorithm to adjust the results. So scaffolding. We're going to make Voronoi.rs with Voronoi Builder. And we'll adjust our random builder function to only return Voronoi Builder for now. So we got to take care of these quick little things. Um, let's see. Go over here and we'll make Voronoi.rs. And what is the quickest way to do it? We'll take um, drunkard. Uh, we'll take an easier one even. We'll take cellular automata. And we'll basically grab the stuff here. We'll plop it in here. Just like that. And now we're going to rename this one from Cellular Automata Builder to um, no refactor. Yeah, it's not letting me rename that. Hmm. wonder what that's about. Um, rename symbol. No references found. What the hell? Okay. Voronoi Builder. Oh, I think I know why. Because I didn't include it in here yet. Um, there we go. Just like that. Now it's going to get a little mad. Um, we'll add that build function in here. We'll just grab... Well, it's just to end mute self. So that's an easy place to start. Alrighty, hopefully that satisfies just about everything. I'm just kind of eyeballing it based on what we've been doing in the past, and we'll see what needs to change. So the other thing I want to do is come in here. Actually, we'll copy this as well. Oh, well, we could have got the RNG. And we'll just box up a Voronoi Builder. We'll return that bad boy. And we are good to go there. So now we can run it and not much is going to happen because we haven't built anything yet. Um, we'll see how that actually ends up going. 
So we're going to build a Voronoi diagram. So let's take a look over here at the browser. In previous usages, we've skimmed over how to actually make a Voronoi diagram and relied on the fast noise library inside RLTK. That's all well and good, but it doesn't really show us how it works and gives us very limited opportunities to tweak it. So we'll make our own. I like that. A uh, little personal aside, I think most of the time, if you're learning about an algorithm, you should implement it yourself. I don't care if it's already been done. I don't care if there's good libraries for it. You should implement it yourself. If you're making something for a production release, something professional, use a library if there's a, a trusted, tried and true library out there. But if you're trying to learn an algorithm, implement it yourself. That's, that's basically it. You can implement it at least once. You'll gain a much, much better understanding of how the algorithm works. Um, in fact, implement it and use a library and compare the results side by side. Make sure that yours um, produces the expected results. You know, give them the same seed or something. And if it's relying on a seed, give them the same seed, right? Or um, benchmark both of them and see how yours performs. That's how you really learn how to implement something. So I, I like this. We could just say, hey, give us this noise and stuff. Or we could actually, and usually noise algorithms aren't too bad. They seem a little bit scary. I mean, granted, developing your own may be a little more difficult, but um, look up the algorithm for like Perlin noise or something, and it's very straightforward. Okay, so the first step in making some Voronoi noise is to populate it with a set of seeds. These are randomly chosen, but not duplicate points on the map. We'll make the number of seeds a variable so that it can be tweaked later. So here's the code. All right, and are we doing, we're doing that in the build, I guess. So let's go in here. Doesn't really say, but I'm gonna guess this is where we go. So let number of seeds equal 64. Um, put those in the wrong order there. So it's a vector of tuples with a U size and a point. I'm not quite sure what that's going to be. I'm, my initial guess is going to be map index and point. That way we don't have to repeatedly convert them or we'll see. Um, so next up, we're going to loop over that. While the number of seeds is less than N seeds, uh, whoops, dot len. Oh, we do need an RNG. Um, I, I don't really know what we need. I'm a little annoyed. Honest, just being very honest about this. I'm a little annoyed, an, a little annoyed at the last couple of chapters because it's it's basically said we've done this enough so you can just do it yourself now but it doesn't really specify where we're putting this so there's a little bit of kind of figure it out and there's nothing wrong with figuring it out but you don't necessarily know what you need and what you don't need um, I would kind of prefer if they just kept giving us a blank scaffolding to start with rather than, you know, I think I copied one of the scaffoldings last time and then it had a bunch of things I had to change. So that just a little bit annoying. So roll dice. We're going to get an X and a Y, pretty standard stuff. We've done this an obscene amount of times already. And we're going to make this VIDX. Interesting names here. So we're just converting it to the XY index.
Uh, there's got to be better... Uh, Clippy doesn't seem to have anything to say about that. I was thinking there might be a nice way to insert if it doesn't contain. It's just a boolean. Something like the hash map. Maybe not. Clippy doesn't seem to care. So, just a thought. So, we're just populating the Voronoi seeds with random points, and we're also getting the index. So, that way we have access to both um, variations instead of having to repeatedly convert to the XY index. Also, I was just thinking about it. We'd almost... <laughs> should almost make this a function at some point. We do this so often. But... I guess, I mean, you could pass in the width and the height and get back two values. It's not, I don't know, it's probably not that big of a deal. Done it so often, though. So anyway, um, this makes a vector, each entry containing a tuple. Inside the tuple, we're storing an index to the map location and a point with the X and Y coordinates in it. We could skip saving those and calculate from the index if we wanted, but I feel that this is clearer. Then we randomly determine a position. Check to see that we haven't already rolled that location and add it. We repeat this process until we have the desired number of seeds. 64 is quite a lot, but we'll give a relatively dense hive-like structure. So I'm guessing that's going to be the areas that get hollowed out. That's my guess. Um, the next step is to determine each cell's Voronoi membership. Okay, well, we should explain what a Voronoi membership is, but um, sure. So, Voronoi distance So basically we're going to make, in this case, 64 um, tuples 0 and 0.0. .0. .0. So I'm guessing 0.0, .0 is going to be our in our our um our distance to something else and 0 is going to be an index or something. Okay, just making sure we don't need to do any subtractions or anything there, so we're good. Okay, so we're just Voronoi membership, uh, a bunch of zeros, whatever our map size is, basically, width times height. Get a mutable iterator and enumerate it over the Vo uh, Voronoi membership. We're going to pull out I and VID. I don't know what VID means, so we'll figure it out as we go. Now, this is us just converting the index, the enumerated value I, into more map-like coordinates. Okay, so now we're getting the distance from where we're currently at to the Voronoi seed, to each Voronoi. So we're doing this for every Voronoi seed, rather. Okay. And then... Let's 
see distance right so okay now i get it and after this yeah we can break this down Fornoid distance dot sort by and it's going to be a b a dot one dot partial compare and b dot one Oops. Okay, so let's kind of break down what we're doing here. Um, we're making Voronoi distance, um, basically one for every seed. And we're getting this Voronoi membership, which is, we're not actually modifying. Oh, no, we are. That's right. It's intermute. That's what VID was. My bad. Okay. Um, so we're getting this Voronoi membership, which is basically one for every tile in our map, right? It's um, self.map.width times map.height. So for each of those tiles in our map, we get an X and a Y value for it. And then for every single seed... We convert that X and Y into a point and get the distance from that point to the um, to the seeds position. Remember those seeds were randomly chosen. Then we sort the seeds based on a partial compare. And then after it's sorted, the VID now becomes the the index, right, um, Voronoi distance. Yeah. It now becomes basically the index, uh, or no, it becomes the seed. We're tying it to the seed. Okay. Right, because we're enumerating the seeds. So then the VID, which again, that name, I don't like that name. It's very non-descriptive. It's, it's very confusing. Um, we should use better names. But the VID is for that Voronoi membership thing. And that's what we're supposed to be calculating. The last thing the tutorial said was the next step is to determine each cell's Voronoi membership. So what we're actually doing here, the way I'm understanding this right now, is the membership says which seed it's associated with. So you're figuring out what seed are you closest to, and that's why we, we generate a distance to every seed with this for loop here, and then we sort them, and whichever one is the closest distance will be the first thing in the vector, so we just access it with, the, with zero here. And dot zero is um, the seed here. So <laughs> it's a lot of like misdirection, but uh, hopefully that makes sense. So what we're basically doing is just figuring out for each tile in the map, right? Yeah, for each tile in the map, what's its closest seed? And that's how we're going to be building out the little hive structure, it seems. So then let's go ahead and read their description as well, because I may not have done the best job explaining that as I was also figuring it out. In this block of code, we create a new vector called Voronoi distance. It contains a tuples. It contains tuples of a U size and a F32, and is pre-made with n seeds entries. We can make this for every iteration, but it's a lot faster to reuse the same one. We create it zeroed. We create a new Voronoi membership vector containing one entry per tile on the map. We set them all to zero. We'll use this to store which Voronoi cell the tile belongs to. For every tile in Voronoi membership, we obtain an enumerator, index number, and the value. We have this mutably so we can make changes. We calculate the x and y position of the tile from the enumerator, and for each entry in the Voronoi seeds structure, we obtain the index via enumerate and the position tuple. 
We calculate the distance from the seed to the current tile using the Pythagoras squared algorithm. And then we set the Voronoi distance seed, um, rather, so Voronoi distance, and then whichever element is at seed to the seed index and the distance. We sort the Voronoi distance vector by the distance, so the closest seed will be the first entry. There's one thing that's throwing me off a little bit here. Voronoi distance. Oh no, that's fine. That's the one that's based off seeds. Correct, okay. So we're good. Never mind. So we sort it by the distance, so the closest seed will be first, then we set the VID, the tiles VID, Voronoi ID, to the first entry in the Voronoi distance list. You can summarize this that in English much more easily. Each tile is given the membership of the Voronoi group to whom's seed it is physically closest. I honestly think I may have done a better job even than that. Because the whole membership thing is a little confusing. I don't feel like there is a, a, a good explanation of how the algorithm works before we kind of started doing it. Um, so I feel like the membership thing is a bit confusing until you start breaking it down. So next, we're going to use this to draw the map. Well, we've already seen it before, but spoilers down there. We've seen it in the previous sections, but as I skim ahead. Okay, so after our loop, we're going to do a loop over the height and the width. Pretty standard stuff. All right, so we just grab a bunch of things here. So we set our number of neighbors to zero. We convert our X and Y from the loop into a map index. And we use that index to get the seed from the Voronoi membership. Basically, again, for this current X, Y index on the map, what is our closest seed? All right, so we got a few of these. And I'm going to do it like this because only a little bit is changing every time. We're going to do x minus 1, x plus 1, and guess what's coming next? And then auto format's going to take over. Um, and there we go. Okay. So we're going to get an interesting effect here, and we've seen it before, but um, it seems pretty straightforward. We, again, figure out what the nearest seed is, and then we check the neighbors. We are only, we're only checking cardinal directions. Um, so we do x minus 1, x plus 1. We do y minus 1 and y plus 1. Simple enough. And we're just checking to see if it is, if it is not the seed then um, we increment the number of neighbors. So we can have up to four neighbors. If there are fewer than two neighbors, okay, actually, no, what we're doing is we're checking, yeah, okay. 
see. Yeah, no, that checks out. So what we're going to see is in most cases, we're going to have a bunch of neighbors and that's going to build up open spaces, right? But then in some occasions where we're going to be getting to like the... Oh, actually, no, I might be saying it the other way around. Okay, we might need to run through an example to make sure we really understand it. But um, if neighbors are less than two, we set it to a floor. So if the Voronoi membership of the neighboring tile is not the same as our current seed, we increment neighbors. So in most cases, we can assume the membership is going to be the same seed. If you have like a big open area, there are, you know, a bunch of tiles clustered near that seed. So in most cases, they're actually going to be near the seed or they're, they're yeah, they're going to be of the same seed and we're not going to be uh, incrementing neighbors. And that's why we're going to be making a lot of floors because we're going to have a low neighbor's value. So only in cases where multiple seeds are kind of all competing for um, competing for the same tiles, basically, that's where you're going to start seeing these neighbor counts going up. I don't know if that makes sense. We're going to read the description as well here. Um, but we are ready to run this. So I'm not going to scroll down. So we'll, we'll see it when I run it here in a moment, but I'm not going to scroll down to spoil it here. So just pay attention to the bottom of the screen. In this code, we visit every tile except for the very outer edges. We count how many neighboring tiles are in a different Voronoi group. If the answer is zero, then it's entirely in the group, so we can place a floor. If it's one, it only borders one other group, so we can also place a floor to ensure we can walk around the map. Otherwise, we leave it as a wall. Then we can run the same calling and placement code we've used before. Okay. So we'll have to add the calling and placement stuff. Let's go to... Um, DLA should have it, right? Let's just grab that and plop this in here. And now let's see what we get. Let's see how... Oh. What are we making the start index? Um, just the center? And it's going to be self.map.width over two. All right, let's take a look at it. Hopefully, I didn't break anything. Here we are. have a lot of open space at the bottom. A suspicious amount. Let's rerun that. Is that just the luck of the random draw? Or is there a problem? I mean, we're getting the same thing again. It's starting about halfway through. So I may have made a typo somewhere. We'll want to just double check some of this. Because that looks a little bit too, too on the money there to be happening multiple times in a row. Although we'll take a quick look and see their image here. Yeah, they do not seem to be have, having that happen. So let me take a look and let me scour through for a moment and make sure I didn't 
make a little bitty typo somewhere that could have a catastrophic effect. So we have 64 seeds. Um, let's see. Self.map.width minus one, perfect. And height minus one, that's all good. I think everything here looks fine. So next up, Ornoid Distance and Membership. Map.width. Map.height. That looks good to me. Okay, so now for I bid and Voronoi memberships, intermute. All right, so this this may be where I did something. Ah, it is. That's right. And you know why? This is a mistake I, I may have done once before. Um, and it's a simple one, but we have to remember we're not working in a 2D vector, a 2D array or anything. Um, the problem is is not so much that I don't understand the math here. The problem is that what you usually do when you do width, you follow it up with height immediately or vice versa like this, height and then width. So it's very easy to just go into that autopilot there for a moment. Um, but yep, that'll do it. So um, this is just basically a virtue of how we have to calculate the, the indices there um, because we're doing a 1D vector as a 2D. Should get a better result now. I think I did make that mistake in an earlier session as well. I would say it's already looking better. It was all it was really cramped at the top before. We had a little bit of calling there. Wait a minute. Oh, is that my starting position? Oh, do I also need to, yeah. Um, self dot map dot width two. Okay, that'll be good enough for a moment. Let's run it real quick. There we go, in the middle of the hive. I'm a really big fan of the way these maps look. I think I mentioned that before, but I uh, really like them. And I think this is, a, this is a fun one to kind of play on, I would think. I would enjoy running around a map like this a little bit. Alrighty, I think we're good. Let me just compare, what did we do here? Do we? Yeah, we, we did it the other way around. We did it at the, at the start as well. So let's copy it up here. And we can remove this from down here. 
Okay. Now let's click back over. Fix that little bit of a bug there. We're going to tweak things. We're already almost done. Tweaking the hive. There are two obvious variables to expose to the builder, the number of seeds and the distance algorithm to use. We'll update the structure signature to include these. Right, map starting position, depth, history, and noise areas, and seeds. All right, so we have this distance algorithm. Um, and in order to use that, I haven't heard about Chevy Chev in a while. Forgot about that one. We'll have to update this as well. Um, how do I want to do this? Well, let's go with the default for now. Um, what do we need? Let's pick one and then we'll probably make three different uh, builders, three different uh, constructors for it. Okay, so we'll update our Voronoi code to use them. Alrighty, so first thing is in the Voronoi code, the start index, no, not that, um, number of seeds. We can kind of. Kind of just ignore that and then look for everywhere that gets mad. And all we have to do is now plop that on there. Okay, perfect. Just a couple. And for our distance algorithms, that's going to be important because that's determining how we figure out the um, the membership stuff, right? Up here, where we're figuring out the distances, that's going to be important. So for seed position, we're going to keep all that the same. We're going to have some more fun here. Let's basically kill that. Let distance, and now we're going to say match self dot distance algorithm. And let's grab all three. And now what are we going to do for Pythagoras? Oh, we're not actually implementing them ourselves. Okay. So in that case, In that case, it'll be really easy to just um, do this for all three and then modify the algorithm. We're using the RLTK algorithms here. So instead of Pythagoras squared, Manhattan. And instead of Pythagoras squared here, actually, I, I didn't even read, but I'm glad I was in the right block. Um, so distance is never read, and that's fine. Oh, I forgot to add it in. I was like, why are we still not using it? Um, oh, whoops, I didn't, I'm so sorry. I thought I removed that. No, I was in the wrong place. Bear with me, 
<laughs> it's apparently one of those days. There we go. We just add it in now. And I I wanted to comment on this unneeded late initialization. It's probably going to tell me to do what I wanted to do and just get rid of this here and set it equal. Um, let's see. Declare distance here, let distance equal, and remove the assignments from the match. Yeah, exactly. So boom, boom. That's how I normally write my Rust, but I can understand why it would look weird to someone coming from like C++. And then after, yeah. There we go. That's how I prefer to write it anyway. I almost commented on it, but I decided not to, and now Clippy made sure that we, that we talked about it. <laughs> Um, I don't think anything else needs to change. So now we're going to use Manhattan distance in our instructor here. We're going to see what it looks like. Okay, now swap it again. Chebyshev algorithm. I remember talking about him, talking about the, the algorithm in university, but it's been so long, I, I can't remember. I'm going to be honest, I, I don't notice that much of a difference. I will take their word for it, I guess. Run Pythagoras one more time. Yeah, if, if you feel like you see a, a big difference between them, that's cool. I am not seeing much. Oh, this might feel a little different. I'm not sure. Felt a little more open. Um... Let's take a look here versus here. Lines are straighter, less organic looking. That's what Manhattan distance does. It calculates distance like a Manhattan taxi driver. Number of rows plus number of columns rather than a straight line distance. Yeah, I mentioned this before. You go over X amount of streets and up some other number of streets. Um, restoring randomness. So we'll put a couple of constructors in for each of the noise types. What happened to the other algorithm? What? We included that, but we're not using it. Interesting. I'm going to copy that because why not? Let's be lazy. And in mod.rs, we'll replace this. We have our two functions here. Oh, they call it Voronoi Cell Builder. All right, that'll fix that. And everything seems to be pretty happy now, except we're missing a third one. <laughs> so if we look back here, it's done. They only did Pythagoras in Manhattan. We see it here as well. And if we go up, though, we have all three algorithms being implemented. I'm wondering if we go to the source code, will we see a 
extra goodies in here. Nope, just unused code. Well, that's bizarre. Um, I could make a quick builder for it. It's not really, it's not really impressive. I mean, it's copied the other one and changed the algorithm. Um, I'm just curious why that was done in the first place. No clue. So we'll leave it there because it may be touched at a later point. Maybe there's a reason it was there. Um, and we'll just see if something happens later. I'm curious what this will look like if we go up to like 128 and force one of these to generate. So that's it though. Um, the wrap up text of the tutorial, that's another algorithm under our belts. We really have enough to write a pretty good roguelike now, but there's still more to come. And we'll just try this a couple of times. We'll get one. So thank you to anyone who showed up today, whether you're lurking, chatting, whatever. I appreciate it. Uh, if you like these coding streams, or you like Dwarf Fortress, or Caves of Cut, or Star Ocean, or whatever other games I happen to be playing, all kinds of stuff, please hit that follow button here on Twitch. Leave notifications on to see when I go live. If you are watching this, or, or you could also head over to YouTube. Or if you're watching this on YouTube in the future, congrats on being in the future. And I'd appreciate if you do all the fun YouTube stuff while you're over there. Like, subscribe, notification bell, comment. I do read my comments and I try to respond to most of them. Um, so that is that. Uh, it's a quick one. Wave diffusion. or Wave, uh, wave, wave function collapse. I was literally mixing two names. Wave function collapse will be next. And that's going to be a, be a big old beefy boy. That's going to be Wednesday. I'm um, looking forward to that. But I do not want to try to cram that on top of this because it is just by length of the page, it is the longest session or it is the longest uh, chapter so far. So we'll save that. Um, and the last thing I want to say is Twitter. I do tweet every time I go live over there. Um, I've heard people complain in the past about... It's been a while since I've heard anyone complain, but... I did in the past have people complain that Twitch notifications were not reliable for them. So if that's been a problem for you, follow me on Twitter, turn the notifications on over there, and you'll see when I go live. Um, I don't really have much else to add. This one felt a little weird. I, mean, I don't know if it was just me or um, if this was uh, something that you guys noticed as well. Um, and it's not just the little mistake of, uh, where was it? It's not just a little mistake right here where I did width and height. That's that's pretty understandable. I don't know. Some just felt a little off today. I hope it didn't make for an unenjoyable session. Huh. I, I don't know what's up. It's weird. Sometimes you get that weird vibe, you know. So I apologize if that was a weird session to listen to. But it was a nice short one. Um, I do like the look of these maps. I'm pretty pretty happy about them. So I guess that's it. We've done an outro. Nothing else to do. So until next time, have a good day, have a good night, whatever it is, wherever you're at, take it easy. A dud!